Today on CityCast Boise, the Meridian Library has been under fire from Christian nationalists for months, and it's about to get even uglier. Director Nick Grove joins us to talk about the upcoming public hearing to dissolve the Meridian Library District, and he tells me that if it passes, it would mean scrapping everything at all four locations. That's computers, books, even the shelves. It's Wednesday, March 8th. I'm Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise's talking about. Hi, Nick. Welcome back to CityCast Boise. Hi. Thank you for having me back. Good to see you. I wish it was under uh, different circumstances, but let's talk about this group, the Concerned Citizens of Meridian. They want to dissolve the Meridian Library District and then have the Ada County Commission put in place a new board. Were you surprised to see the county commissioners set a date for a public hearing on their request? Not really. They have processes and procedures that they are legally obligated to go through. I'm not surprised that it has progressed to this point. Again, I'm saddened that we even have to be having this discussion at all. But from the commissioner's standpoint, I am not surprised that we are where we are currently. Well, I guess at least that, like at least you weren't blindsided by this. Uh, I have to note here that the Meridian residents elect their current board. So it's not like the public has no say in this or no ways to direct the library already. From your understanding, if the district is dissolved, what does that mean for library patrons? And also, like, what does that mean for you and your staff? If this motion goes to a ballot and the residents of Meridian decide to dissolve the library district, the county is obligated under state law to dispose of all assets of the Meridian Library District and pay off any indebtedness that um, is outstanding. Um, And so that means essentially that they have to liquidate all assets. And then from there, if a petition were to restart, they would be starting a library from scratch. And so the petitioners want to just get rid of leadership, which is what is already in place with the current process and state code for trustee elections. However, they want to just get rid of leadership and keep libraries because they value libraries. They just don't want uh, the leaders that are in place to be there, uh, myself included. And there is process and procedure already in state code that has worked for 100 years. That is how that process works. But if it dissolves, everything goes away completely. Wow. No stands or buts about it. It's in state code. Wow, that is wild. Like they're trying to be snipers. Sounds like they went, <laughs> they're going for a nuclear option at this point. That's pretty, pretty upsetting. Yeah, there's no in between. It's it's spelled out. So they've tried to spin it a, a different way. Again, another not factual statement from this group. Wow. Well, we talked about this last time you were on, but I just want this to be super clear for everybody. What is the Meridian Library's policy on distributing materials to children, specifically those that might be considered obscene or sexually explicit? We have a collection development policy, and in it, we define what is selected and how it makes it to our collection. Also, we do not serve as the parents to make decisions on what people do choose to read. We do not have anything in our collection, nor does any library for that matter have in Idaho public libraries. Do we have anywhere in the state, ours included, where there's pornography or obscenity as defined by law? People can prescribe their own definitions to these items, but that doesn't mean that it's actually what that means. Words do have meaning, and we do not have pornography. We do not have obscene materials. We do have collections that represent our entire community and meet the needs of our entire community. And some of those materials are not what I would read necessarily. That's not my personal preference. And some of them are not what my children would read, but my children, personally, I talk to my children about what they're reading, what they plan to read. If it's not something that we've agreed on, they know to put it down and go to the next item. They're also accusing the library district of misusing taxpayer funds because they find some of the books offensive. What do you say to that? We have a very open financial policy. If you go to our website, All of our audits are on there. Our budget planning is on there. We have a budget hearing every year for the public to weigh in on how um, the budget is set up. 
So we have all of the parts and pieces that they're asking for publicly available. Just because they don't agree with some of the book selections does not mean that we're fiscally irresponsible. We've made selections based on our community's need at large, not single individuals' um, preference to censor what other people have access to. I'm wondering, what are you hearing from the community you serve? By and large, resounding support. Parents are largely sending us messages saying, there's materials that I don't necessarily want my children to read yet, or in some cases at all. But that is my choice as a parent to make that determination. And you making it available to the public does not mean that you are making me or my child read or see these materials. And we know how to responsibly use the library. And so by a large, large, large margin, we are hearing support for libraries in general, but more specifically our library and the value that we bring to our community. In your opinion, what role does a library play in promoting intellectual freedom? Intellectual freedom is a paramount value for public libraries um, and libraries in general. It is vital to a healthy society for people to freely express ideas in safe ways and to be able to agree to disagree, to see a world beyond their own beliefs, to understand that other people have different life experiences or different philosophies or different ideology than you. And that can either be a window into someone else's world or a mirror being able to reflect back what you feel and haven't had uh, sufficient ways to express your experiences uh, in a way that comes across to other people. Beautifully put. Uh, I, I love the way you put that. What do you think is driving this push to censor and in some cases even outright destroy our public libraries? Is there something more sinister going on than just sort of this claim of like, we're protecting kids? It's an easy rallying point for organizers across the country to use fear and intimidation and misinformation um, and hide behind the guise of protecting children when, in fact, it is pushing an ideological mission to have everyone see and experience life the exact same um, and to neuter any topic that they do not personally agree with or have not lived in themselves um, and finding ways in which they can um, push their mission and goals um, and usually hide behind other language that can bring in a wider audience by making the wider audience fearful and not fully understand a situation um, by cherry picking the, the way that they present their argument or how they present uh, material. Yeah. And it seems to be, like you said, part of this bigger thing that we're seeing at the state house of, you know, othering trans people, uh, doing a lot of anti-LGBTQ agenda stuff. I looked through the list of books that the concerned citizens of Meridian put forth as, you know, why they're wanting to close the Meridian Library. And I noticed most of them are LGBTQ based and I didn't see a single romance novel on there. And I'm sure every library has plenty of those. They're a mom favorite. You know, I didn't see anybody pulling straight romance novels. So I just think, I think that's a real distinction and kind of interesting. There's a, a lot of misinformation on purpose that is being broadcast to the community in terms of saying that the items that they disagree with that shouldn't be on our shelves are to protect children from sexual um, sexualization and things of that nature. And really, everything that they have challenged or wanted to ban, censor, are based on LGBTQ or people of color. Absolutely. Full stop. Um, and, you know, their argument is not that they want to ban books, but to ban a book Putting it behind a counter and having to show your ID to check something out is censorship. That is easily identifiable dictionary definition. You are censoring what somebody has access to, thus banning them the full rights and access to material. You can choose whatever words you want. 
comes back to if you make it so that people don't have access, you are banning their right to have access to that material and to make choices based on their wants and needs um, as individuals and as families. Well, it means so much to me, and I know a lot of people that you're protecting that right. And uh, I wanted to ask you, you've been in libraries on and off since you were a teenager. Did you ever think that being a librarian would be so punk rock? Like, <laughs> like being a librarian in Idaho has become like one of the most punk rock things a person can do. <laughs> you know, I, I never had that uh, mindset. I know <laughs> even in the library world, there's, you know, been that joke for years about being like a punk rock librarian and things like that. I, I never saw it that way. My my friends definitely have never, never seen it that way, you know, <laughs> um, not until recently have they, you know, truly appreciated the the level of uh, work and dedication that goes into it and you know even in the loving way you know mocking you know you just work at a library you must read books all day and it's like no I, I wish that would be the dream job right <laughs> but you know most of the day is spent talking to people in one form or another good bad or in between it's more challenging than I anticipated mm. um, but it'll get better we will weather the storm and we'll continue to be here for our community well, so the public hearing is set for March 20th at 6 p.m. at the Ada County Courthouse. Anyone who lives in the location where the district covers can testify or send comments ahead of time by email. I got to ask you, are you nervous at all? Do you think that this could happen? I'm not nervous. And I think one of the reasons I'm not nervous is there's still a process. And even if the commissioners, after the hearing, decide to put it on a ballot, which I don't think they should, but if they do, I'm confident in the level of support that our community um, will come out to vote if it does come to that. We have great library supporters. And not all library supporters are library users. I would say most of the petitioners are not library users either. So uh, that is not a status of who it would vote in favor or vote against. But I know in my heart of hearts, that our community loves the Meridian Library District and will show up with great support, not only at the commissioner's meeting on March 20th, but if this were to go to a ballot, that they would show up in, in big numbers to fight against hate, fight against intolerance, and fight against misinformation that is purposely misleading people to turn on one another. It's very disingenuous to say that you're saving children when you're turning neighbor against neighbor, when you are trying to make people distrust one another um, and not, you know, if you're, you're so worried about protecting children, I have children too. And we, we fear for our safety based on the misinformation that these groups peddle. It's very disingenuous and flat out lies that they use to, um, tell people about their um, perceived notion of how the world works. And it's very frustrating. Yeah, I can't even imagine. It must be super frustrating, especially when you're talking about, you know, a lot of the supporters of the library aren't users because this is an entire, you know, universally true, but a lot of the users of libraries are lower income. I know when I was a kid, uh, I would go to the Scholastic Book Fair and we didn't have the money to buy books. And I would make a list of every book I wanted. And then I would go to the Ada Community Library, hand my librarian a list, and she would find me all of those books. And, you know, as a, as a kid without a ton of money to buy books or to use computers or to get involved in local programs, I mean, the Meridian Library serves everybody. It's a huge, huge part of your community. It is. And we do have a, a very diverse socioeconomic demographic in Meridian. Um, we have over 126,000 people in our library district alone. And to say that, you know, they're only at one end or the other of the socioeconomic ladder would, would just be an untrue. Um, and we do a lot to equal the playing field for everyone, making sure that we serve everyone in our community from low income to high income. And we have users across the board not only in the materials that they check out from the library, but in the services that we provide, notary services, 3D printing, podcast studio, business help, one-on-one um, -on -one tech help. Uh, we have programs from story times to STEM projects for kids and teen after-school programs and knitting programs and all kinds of amazing services that serve 
all of our community from daycares to senior care. Well, Nick, you do such a good job supporting your community, and it makes me wonder, what can we do to support the Meridian Library District? So letters of support um, and emails of support to the Ada County Commissioners. Anything in writing must be to them five days in advance of the March 20th uh, hearing date, and also show up, testify, um, and support the Meridian Library District at that hearing. If it does go to a ballot, you know, the library itself will be much more restricted in some of the ways that we can talk about these things. But if it does go to a ballot, the biggest help will be making sure that we have an electorate that turns out. We can't have 1,900 people show up to vote when we have a city of 126,000 people. That's not a, a true representation of um, how our community values our libraries. Well, we will link to uh, all the ways people can help you in the show notes, and we'll link to where people can send those emails to. Nick, thank you so much for making time for us, and thank you so much. Hold on, I'm going to (laughs) cry. Dang it, I almost made it through. The whole time I've been like, don't cry, but that's how much I love our libraries. So (laughs) Um, thank you so much for everything the Meridian Library does, too, and uh, we look forward to you kicking this thing in the butt. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And before you head out, if you're a Meridian resident and want your opinion on the dissolution of the library district to be heard, you can submit a synopsis, argument, or other documents to bocc1 at adacounty.id.gov or by mail to 200 West Front Street, 3rd floor. Items must be submitted five days in advance of the hearing date, which is March 20th. If you're planning to attend in person, the meeting is at the Ada County Courthouse in the public hearing room on the first floor. Be sure to get there extra early because they are expecting an extremely packed house. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend? Leave us a review and subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning for a fun chat with CityCast Salt Lake about the possibility of Amtrak connecting our two cities. Bye. Bye.